The plan for a trip to Jebel Uwainat was hatched in the summer of 2003. It involved Mahmoud Murray, Chris Scott, Kevin White, Rich Washington and myself, Toby Savage. All of us had considerable experience in the desert, but we'd never been to Jebel Uwainat. Rich and his wife kindly hosted a lunch for us at their home near Oxford. Yeah. Past experiences, charts, maps and broken bits of Land Rover were all discussed long into the night to form a plan. Yeah. The weak link in the Land Rover. But not in terms of weakness, like my cousin in a 110. It had been on at one point at a major place. Right. But you see the dunes are close. Oh no, God. Uh, so you know you've been tested now, aren't you? Call yourself a PhD. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> But now he's probably taking the route I'm taking. Now. So no way yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go left. Yeah, yeah. So we go left and it's all four kilos. Oh, okay, that means. But you. I, I, I don't like walking too much. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly not cycling. Right, okay. <laughs> because Tommy made me 22 miles yesterday cycling. Yeah, yeah, I did it really, yeah. Oh, and then when I went back. Good from work. Here, yeah. I went, is this a beautiful sand sheet? And yeah, you, I remember this one. Yeah. You find you you will be heading to Bir Tafawi and Bir Kamel. Mm. We get two. Six months later, we all met up again in Egypt, and were united with the cars that were to take us on a 1,500-mile round trip through some of the most arid regions of the Sahara. They were Mahmoud's Series Three and his cousin's 110. Both Land Rovers were fitted with Toyota 3.5-litre diesel engines. The 110 was driven by Ibrahim, a Siwan who had rarely driven on tarmac. On the way south we picked up Lutfi, a confidence-inspiring desert guide in his unbreakable Toyota HJ45. It was reassuring to have him along. Noisy, dusty, bouncy. You're rolling about well. Yeah. We've got the screaming dagos live. <laughs> yeah, so it is. Yeah. It's going to be windy camp tonight out in the open. It's going to be very windy. Yeah. Carrying such a heavy payload, both Land Rovers were rolling around a bit on the sand. We're looking for somewhere to camp. It's sheltered from what is now quite a strong wind. They've come into some rocks. That's it. Another inch. Finally, after a long day's driving, the sun was setting, ice had cooked a meal, and we relaxed around the fire. Bleary eyed faces here. <laughs> Good morning. I'm getting the hang of it. We had a lot of ground to cover and set a brisk pace across flat sand sheet, a joy to drive on. This is the Libyan Egyptian border. Oh, hey, you're in Libya now? Oh. Libya. <laughs> Could you check his passport, please, and make sure the visas are intact? Okay, welcome to Egypt. Can I take some money around here? No. <laughs> yeah, I'll do your deal. <laughs> Beast up around the southwesterly edge of the Gilf Kabir. So, what kept you then? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Your nose looks really big through a wide angle lens. <laughs> oh, yeah, water, so water, water. We're live. <laughs> you ever wonder why we had to run for shelter with the promise of a brave new world and fell beneath the sky? I've been having hours of this. Delirious. Hours of this. It's just, it's Delirious. Just, yeah. Yes, this man needs water. Yeah. He needs drowning in water, that's what he needs. <laughs> it's our Christmas day breakfast. Um, so we've got bottles of champagne in the cool box and fine foods to chew on. <laughs> But we are in uh, Wadi Sura. Okay. 
I think so. When, when I looked through these images with Nick Drake, we had the dust satellite images alongside these, and the dust images were maximized over these sort of regions. Yeah. These look like areas of deflation. Yeah. yeah. Deflation. What does that mean, deflation? Is that another one? Removal of material. Oh, okay. In other words, type of weathering or more precise to. Weathering is different, it's breaking up rocks. Right, oh, okay. Deflation is lowering the surface through. Oh, new cave is. In there, the mushroom rock is, I suppose, here. Yeah. So it's, it's marked on the way that happened. Yeah. So there would have been pools in here, mm -hmm. Kevin. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your theory, Kev, on the uh, swimmers then? Well, I think they were being sacrificed by being thrown off to this rock here. That's my theory. Oh, there's one. Because they look like they're falling, they don't look like they're swimming. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I think, I think we're going to get into this one here. Yeah. Uh, east, what's the east? We've walked up this valley, uh, a couple of hundred yards I suppose, to uh, the water. That's it. It's the only water around here. What's the verdict? Salty. Is it? Bizarrely, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that somebody at some stage has lived here. Because there's a shelter here, there's various traps for animals. There's barbed pieces of wood keeping the animals from the water. Does that feel good? It feels very good. Well, look up at the camera then. I think I should take my clothes off. Oh. <laughs> Since you have I'll, the camera on. I'll switch the camera off then. <laughs> So we're consulting the Michelin map, which is hugely inaccurate, but it's good, but it's good enough for this purpose. Yes. And trying to rationalise where to go. Yeah. Meanwhile, food. Oh. <laughs> we're starving. <laughs> We had achieved our first goal and were about 700 miles south of Cairo and 500 from the nearest tarmac, camped at Karkatal. We had done this in three vehicles you would think twice about taking to Sainsbury's.